Okay, ceiling fans are appliances. Hear that little motor running? You don't see the fans running. I don't know what the deal is. Tried everything. I tried the remote control over there in the window. Something's wrong. This is the media room. Ceiling fans are appliances. This is the interior plumbing and appliance section. These are the two bedrooms, the northeast and southeast bedrooms on the east side of the house. It's a Jack and Jill bathroom, GFCI works, GFCI receptacles. Okay. I guess I'm show, show and tell. See, it's GFCI protected over there. Should have a little, should be labeled GFCI. Here's the lavatory basins. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right, on both of them. The right, this would be the north lavatory basin. It's missing its drain stopper. Underneath here, and this is all of them. Boring. Boring is good. Boring. Okay. Coming on along, both upstairs bathtubs. This is the worst one. It's the one with Jack and Jill. Look at all the rust. Look at all the rust coming through here. Can you resurface this? You bet you can. It'll look like new for a couple of years. And that's it. I mean, it's done, fixed. A couple of years, it's good to go. But after a few years, a couple, three years, you're gonna be wanting to refinish it again. And then it's not gonna last as long the next time and the next time. So it's just inevitable when the enamel porcelain, porcelain enamel starts giving it up. It's inevitable. Here's the strainer right there. It looks kind of messed up, huh? Okay, and we don't have a, a strainer basket. Uh, we got a strainer. We don't have a stopper. Uh, the commodes are fine. They're the flushing and stuff. <laughs> Bathrooms with an operable window are not required to have a vent fan. Now, these vent fans go to the exterior, but on the exterior video, you notice that the louvers look pretty rough on these guys. And that's the Jack and Joe. Now this is the upstairs thermostat. We've noticed that this is not programmable. Okay. We also noticed that it's in a bedroom. Thermostats are dumb animals. It only tries, it tries to do what you tell it to do. And that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it doesn't have any idea what's on the other side of that door. What I'm getting at is if you close this door because you want a reasonable amount of privacy, you close this door, you put the thermostat exactly where you want it, and you might be perfectly comfortable, but whoever's on the other side of this door, they may be burning up hot or they might be freezing cold. But the thermostat's only doing what it was told to do. And the thermostat has no idea what's going on over here. This is the upstairs hall bathroom. And this bathtub, it's got a smaller chip in it, like I said. And of course the uh, drain stopper is what it is. And well, we're also missing a, another drain stopper here. Oh! This is why you need a barrier to keep the insulation from falling out from the attic. This, that, that ladder is supposed to be lined with a barrier. If you remember the attic video, okay, we're kind of going back. This guy drains slowly. These two, this one on the right, the north one, drains slowly. All right, you see we got a carbon monoxide alarm outside of here. Upstairs, we have alarms everywhere we need them. Downstairs, we do not have an alarm in the downstairs common areas. And this carbon monoxide goes for these three bedrooms. This is assumed not to be a bedroom. If this becomes a bedroom, then that becomes an issue. If this becomes a bedroom, we probably need a smoke alarm that's a little closer. And every alarm that we've got, I pushed the button, the test button. That's how I do it. So we're coming on along, stopper, boring. Okay. Let's keep on trucking, man. Let's 
keep on trucking home inspections. Coming in along here. This is kind of interesting. We have a carbon monoxide, smoking carbon monoxide alarm in the laundry. In the laundry. We sure do have one of those. But that's not close enough to the parent bedroom. It's not close enough to the parent bedroom. It's a four prong electric clothes dryer. It's not hooked up. The laundry equipment's not hooked up. Not hooked up. And this is not GFCI. When this home was built 15 years ago, GFCI was not required in the laundry like that. Now it's required at the 120. It's also required at the 240, the four prong right in there. It's currently required. Okay. I'm going to move right on along. Okay, so the downstairs thermostat is not in a bedroom. It's out in the open so we can get everything regulated nice. Now the interesting thing about this guy is he's not programmable either. It's just a straight thermostat. The code requires that every single family residential dwelling have at least one programmable thermostat. It'd be even better if it was a smart thermostat, but anyway. So we do not have a programmable thermostat in this home. We'll just keep going this way. This is the parent bathroom. Missing another drain stopper. Uh, same thing with the GFCI that we had up at the Jack and Jill. This is your home inspector. Hello, I need to tuck in my shirt. I'll do it before you get here. My client's on his way. They're on their way. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, wonderful couple. Buying their first home and they trust me, and that's an honor. That's an honor. This is a garden bathtub. The only thing wrong with this bathtub, I don't, I mean, the only thing that I can find, ascertain, determine about this bathtub is the hot water faucet over here is real close to your fingers, and you have a little, it's a little bit of difficulty with the orientation and getting this thing to turn right. Because every time you turn, you have to like make little bitty increments, and so that's kind of weird, all right. So, bathtub, shower gaskets working pretty good. Um, you know, there's no accounting for tape. So there's the shower head, and um, it works. It works. I know because I worked it. Moving on along, this is the half bath, and it's it's completely boring. And that's GFCI protected. Doesn't have the little label on it. You know, all the plumbing is just pretty straightforward. That's a, that's a nice thing. We're moving along into the um, kitchen. Well, appliances. Appliances. Okay, the fireplace, the hearth extension extends far enough. Okay, it doesn't have an energy saving glass front. It's not required. It has a screen. That's a good thing. It's not required. There's a lot of soot in this fireplace. I'm just not so sure why there's so much soot in an artificial fireplace. So they don't make smoke, they make soot. You cannot close the chimney damper 100%. You're not supposed to be able to because it's an artificial gas log. There'll be notes about that in your report. The gas key is present. We already talked about the fresh air vent for it. The, it's missing its hood out there around the corner. About five, six years ago, code changed so that you shouldn't have an electric receptacle outlet that's more than six inches behind uh, uh, a countertop. You know, because you can have your cord coming down there, you have your Scentsy candle up here, your crock pot or whatever, and somebody hooks the cord. And again, when this home was built, this was perfectly fine, you know, application, and it's since changed. The refrigerator is kind of scratched up. Refrigerators are beyond the scope of this inspection. You know, it's making ice. But I'm not getting anything here. I got the light. Got a telephone. I wonder who's calling me. I wonder who's calling me. Good home, this is Bud. Excellent. Can, can, I, can I call you back in literally five minutes? I'm going to call you. I, in five minutes, I will be right with you, sir. Thank you. 
Okay. That was business. Can you believe that? I get some. I get some business. When this home was built, when it was just a little baby in the builder's belly, and they didn't know anything about whether it was going to be what's going to be in the kitchen or not. They didn't have a kitchen reveal party. All right, so all these receptacles and switches and everything were built out from the studs so that when the drywall, the gypsum wall came in, all right, then all this stuff mounted flush and nice. And then we came in, and we added this beautiful splash back here, and it, it sticks out just a little bit. It sticks out just a little bit. So what happens there is that now we've got a gap that compromises the fire blocking. And the screws didn't fit. The screws didn't fit, so they put sheetrock screws in there. Sheetrocks don't, screws don't need a hole. They make their own holes. They make their own holes right through the insulation of the wires. And they sell these things called extenders, and uh, they cost about two bucks a piece. And so that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twenty, four dollars. It's going to cost you more than twenty-four dollars. They're going to charge you sales tax and stuff. That's how they get you. But the, the thing is, is like for less than thirty dollars, all this could have been done done right. Um, but that's it. That's what that's about. And then we're coming on along. The oven. We got oven lights on, as you can see. Turn that oven light off. See if I can get the broil to come on. I've had the broil on. I know it works. Cooktop. Everything's working fine. But look, look at that knob. Look at that knob. That's kind of funky, huh? All right. And then code says that this corner shouldn't be any closer to this than 24 inches. KitchenAid might have a different manufacturer specification. Supersedes code. KitchenAid might have a different different number. Okay. It's vented. It goes to the exterior. Tape's not allowed on some vents, but um, um, metallic tape like that is allowed on this vent. Coming into the light. There we go. Vent fan six speeds. There we go. Cancel. Can I stop it? <laughs> Get fed off. Okay, I guess I can. But it is it's, it's a little dirty right there. So are you gonna go red from it? There you go. I knew you had it in you. I've been playing with this guy all day long. You think I know how to turn it off? But it was, huh? Well, there you go. Talking and talking. The kitchen faucet is a little bit on the loosey goosey side right there. Okay. Well, I had a bottle. I could have just put a bottle in there. All right. Here we go. And here, light on, off, fan, timer. Set clock. No. What did I do? Cancel. Thirteen seconds. Start. And look at that. Look at all that red light there. That's my magic stick. That tells me, and it's supposed to blink on and off. It's not supposed to be continuous. So it'll. There it goes. Okay. Steam coming off of that. I didn't need that little stick. I just like to do it. It's kind of fun. I'm ever going to have play every once in a while. Okay, the kitchen sink, again, this is loose. This is the overflow drain for the dishwasher. Dishwasher ran. Come over here. Now, the garbage disposal manufacturer says that you shouldn't have a rocker switch. It should be on or off. It's something you can just bump like that accidentally while you're digging your wedding ring out of a disposal like that. Okay. I just have a rocker switch on that. Coming on along, I think it's a 
Oh, I can read it. I can read it. There we go. One third horsepower garbage disposal. Again, the plumbing looks boring, which is good. Which is good. There's my little sticker there, but we didn't do a termite today. Okay, and then these, see these sticks? That's what they have holding up the sink. Sticks. What's she, rock screws? Right in this plywood. That's what's holding up the sink. The manufacturer thinks that you should have drilled holes and put clips in this. That's what the manufacturer thinks you should have done. Hmm. This is the dishwasher. We've been running it. We've been having a good time. It looks like it's original to the house, too. The Texas Real Estate Commission says any rust. So we got some rust right there. See that rust? Rust, rust, rust. Both racks. Both racks. We got some rust on the racks. Okay. Shouldn't have a rocker switch. Now, if this home was built this morning and it wasn't, the disposal and the dishwasher would be GFCI protected. But this house wasn't built this morning. 15 years ago, it didn't have to be GFCI protected. Just like the garage didn't have to be GFCI protected. Just like the laundry didn't have to be GFCI protected. I mean, the laundry would have been GFCI protected if it would have been an exposed receptacle. But behind the equipment, those receptacles um, were not required to be GFCI protected at the time. Alarm systems are beyond the scope of this inspection.